Uh, hello, everybody, and good morning. Uh, this is IGTV, a production of New York City Metro InfraGuard Members Alliance. And with us on, uh, on the line today is uh, Richard Horowitz. And if you don't know it already, I'm, I'm telling everybody every week, Rich is uh, certainly a, an accomplished attorney, a private investigator, and a former member of the IDF. You should know that by heart by now if you've been listening to me, all right? Because I do make a point of making that representation each week. All right, so, Rich, we got a number of different things coming up here today. And some of this is very interesting because it goes to government reporting, not anywhere else, here in the United States. All right, which I think is very, very interesting. But I'm not gonna, uh, I'm not gonna jip you here. All right, this is this is your segment. So the first one you want to talk about the Senate uh, subcommittee hearing on the Near East. Go ahead, take take that one away. Uh, last week, the Senate subcommittee on the Near East held a hearing uh, entitled um, "Iranian Terrorism in in the Middle East." Obviously, uh, after the attack in Bulgaria, as a uh, 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 some background, let's not forget the last round of talks with uh, Iran were held on Monday and Tuesday, June uh, 18th and 19th, Monday, Tuesday. That Friday, 44 senators wrote a letter to President Obama, among other things, saying that, uh, that the president should not take the military option off the table. Hearings were, that was on Friday, hearings were Monday and Tuesday, Wednesday, the following day, there was a House Armed Committee, House Armed Services Committee hearing entitled Addressing the Iranian Nuclear Challenge and Understanding Military Options. So we have uh, the government uh, keeping pressure on in terms of hearings and, and uh, other reports that are coming out. And uh, I'll give you some of the highlights from this particular hearing. First, the, uh, one of the witnesses referred to a declassified CAA report from 1986, which explains that Iranian terrorism stems from two basic uh, propositions. Number one, they believe it a religious duty to export the Islamic revolution. Number two, that terrorism is part of their foreign policy. Now, these, uh, these propositions are in a declassified uh, CIA report, but they're straight out of the Iranian constitution. The Iranian constitution says exactly that, that they have a religious obligation to export their revolution and it's part of their foreign policy. The uh, Iranians, uh, uh, another point made was that Iran is able to call on numerous Middle East terrorist groups, should it wish to, to carry out attacks. That Hezbollah doesn't uh, carry out an attack without Iran's okay, that over the last 10 years, Iran has provided Hezbollah with approximately $200 million a year. And the report, uh, uh, witnesses at the, excuse me, at the hearing, witnesses at the hearing uh, highlighted certain uh, attacks, or attempted attacks over the years. Number one, uh, they, someone said that the, um, testified that, that the, uh, the Khobar, Tower, Khobar Towers attack in Saudi Arabia in 1996, the Supreme Leader himself gave, uh, gave the operatives uh, the Saudi uh, Hezbollah uh, cells. Uh, the okay to go ahead with it. But let's not forget, Iran is Shia, Saudi Arabia is Sunni, but there is a, a Shia community in Saudi Arabia, mostly the eastern part of Saudi Arabia, a city called Katif has been in the news, that is all the way on the eastern part of Saudi Arabia, it's a Shia city, there have been some protests there. So uh, the Cobra Towers attack was done uh, by Iran through their uh, Saudi Arabia and Hezbollah cells. The D.C. Uh, plot where Saudi Arabia tried to kill the, uh, plotted to kill the director, the uh, ambassador of Saudi Arabia. The director of MI5 was quoted by someone uh, at the hearing saying that all the evidence leads straight back to Iranian leadership, quote, end quote. In March of uh, this year, Turkey foiled a plot to, uh, f Iranian plot to hit the diplomatic missions in Istanbul. In June, two Iranians were arrested in Kenya uh, with explosives on the way to deliver them to al-Shabaab in Somalia. July 7th, we know that Iranians, uh, an Ira uh, Hezbollah operative was uh, arrested in Cyprus, planning an attack that was similar to the Bulgarian attack. So see, these are some of the highlights from that hearing. It's online, it's available, it's very interesting. Uh, going to a different topic, the House Subcommittee on Transportation held a hearing entitled Quote, a decade after 9-11,
could American flight schools unknowingly be training terrorists, unquote. Uh, the Transportation Security Administration has what is called an alien flight student program. Uh, it prohibits flight trainers from training uh, foreigners without a security assessment. Uh, the uh, uh, representative, a senior official from uh, TSA, in his statement, his statement was entitled, TSA's process to ensure flight for foreign flight students don't pose security risks has weaknesses. And the... Uh, most disturbing uh, piece of information from that uh, testimony was that 25,000 uh, foreign nationals in the FAA's database are not in the TSA's database. In other words, if they were doing things correctly, everyone in the TSA's database would be in the uh, FAA's database. So we have 25,000 in the FAA's data database registered as pilots, not in the TSA's database. In other words, they weren't. Uh, vetted properly. Well, that that is a, a that's a great report, Rich. And uh, you know, I think we're uh, we're going to take a short break here, and then right after this, we're going to come back with more from Richard Horowitz. All right, so just stand by, everybody, and we.